So this is just a quick guide for MAMRS students in diagnostic radiography about how they might want to change their exposures based upon different patient body habitus. I'll be talking about some concepts um, which go in concert with another presentation which is explaining exposures. If you haven't had a look at that yet in your course materials, I advise you to have a look through that before watching too much further. So you've already had KVP and MAS explained to you in the earlier parts of your study and it's time now to really use those concepts in very real, very practical sorts of terms. So this is very likely to be examination material. So um, a lot of students struggle as to when to increase or decrease their KVP and MAS and they have a tendency to folder them together in the idea of just increasing and decreasing the exposure. But there are times and uh, situations where you need to include um, one in your uh, modification, so just to change either the KVP or your MAS. And sometimes on placement this knowledge isn't explained well and there are indeed some qualified radiographers who also struggle with the concept. So they will uh, have a tendency to intuit the process and to do it uh, intuitively as opposed to working their way through the patient presentation goes to the patient. So the first thing I want you to understand is the first concept which is that the more photons that you have hitting the image receptor the darker the image. Simple as that. Now that information is going to come in handy later on. Now we're going to learn the exposures using a fixed KVP technique and what I mean by that is that uh, every single body region on a standard normal sized patient has an ideal KVP. So this table gives you approximate KVP ranges for particular parts of anatomy. So we don't have a tendency to use a KVP much lower than 50 KVP. That's your functional minimum. Um, in my clinical experience, I've seen KVPs as low as 48, maybe 46, but that really is pushing the boundaries. Um, below that point, the photons really just don't have enough energy really to penetrate through even the weakest of materials. And you can read that chart there yourself, working your way through 50s with fingers, 60 with humeri, 70 with shoulders, and indeed lots of body regions. 70 kVp seems to be quite an ideal uh, kVp range for a lot of structures. Working our way 75 and 80 as we work our way into the thicker, denser body regions. And greater than 80 kVp really should only be used in unusual circumstances. And probably the most common of those is if you have got a particular preference from your radiology staff for very, very um, low contrast chest x-rays or um, chest x-rays to be done at a higher kVp range. What is kVp? Well, your KVP is essentially how powerful the X-ray photons are, and a really high KVP will punch through near anything. There's not really any body material that are going to stop it, maybe uh, metals and things like that. But uh, when we add that to our second concept, which is that the higher the KVP, the more photons that we have hitting the image. The end result of that is that the higher the KVP, the darker the image is going to be because more photons are hitting it. But um, what one generator says is 75 kVp might not even be close. Machines um, fall out of calibration. And so um, I'm talking conceptually here. You might um, use 75 kVp in one centre, go to the next centre and use exactly the same exposure and the kVp won't even be close. So machines do wear out. Um, for the sake of this argument, however, we're just going to assume that all X machines are perfect. So the MAS is quite literally just the number of photons that are hitting the patient. As you know, it's the product of the number of photons per unit of time multiplied by the time, that is the MA times the time. And a very high MAS means lots and lots of photons are hitting the patient and then the image receptor. So the higher the MAS, the more photons we're hitting the image. So we'll talk about the MAS, yeah. Um, it is the product of the MA in the time. However, unless we have some unusual sets of circumstances, we're going to consider them one unit for the moment. There are some times when you want to use um, low MA and high time, such as for breathing techniques. There'll be times when you want to use a high MA and a low time, such as for patients who might be uh, distracted or agitated or, or moving, in which case you want to try down to cut down the time as much as possible. But conceptually, we're going to tie them together. So if you increase the KVP, the image will be darker. If you increase the MAS, 
the image will be darker. If you decrease the KVP, the image will be lighter. If you decrease the MAS, the image will be lighter. So let's consider a hypothetical scenario that your image has got the perfect density. That is, it's in terms of being light or dark, it's absolutely perfect. But you want to achieve the same density but with a higher KVP. In that situation, you're going to increase the KVP, but you do need to change something else. That is, to compensate for the higher KVP, we'll need to decrease MAS. Okay, so if you have an ideal density and you increase one factor, then something else has to decrease. If you increase the MAS, you have to decrease the KVP and vice versa if you want to maintain the density as it is. There are all sorts of rules of thumb that people go by, which is the equivalent of if you add 10 KVP, you're effectively doubling the time. So if you add 10 KVP, you have to halve the MAS and things like that. I want to talk just for a little moment about tissue densities here. As you know, the body has a density approximately that of water, that is one gram per cubic centimetre. Air, obviously, much, much lighter at 0.0012 grams per cubic centimetre. It's where you compare soft tissue structures um, to water that things get a little touch interesting. So yes, the average soft tissue density is one. Fat, on the other hand, has a lower density than water. Muscle has a higher density than water. Bone, significantly higher, nearly double the density. And lung is approximately the same as muscle. Remembering that when we have lung, we don't just have air. We also have lots of structures such as um, pulmonary vasculature and great vessels and stuff like that. So how do we increase our exposure on a normal sized patient? Well, if your patient has a high degree of muscle, we're going to need to punch through a little bit harder, so we need a slightly higher KVP. If they have a high fat, then the KVP is going to be more than adequate. If anything, you'd decrease it, but we'll just keep it the same for the moment. But as the patient increases in muscle mass, then adding more and more KVP is a good idea. And as they increase more and more in fat mass, adding more MAS is a good idea. So if the patient has a very high fat mass, however, we're talking about a lot of tissue. We're talking about a lot of tissue which can compromise the image quality by making it, causing a lot of scatter radiation and a very gray image. So if we have so much tissue, the higher the KVP is going to really make it grey. That's why we increase the MAS. But only increasing the MAS means that we may not have a beam strong enough to get through all that soft tissue. In that circumstance, sometimes if you can't get a diagnostic image only using the MAS, then you might have to increase the KVP as well. Let's have a look at it graphically. So if we have a normal patient who is, has uh, a normal body habitus, obviously nothing changes. If we have a person who has got a normal um, fat and muscle deposition and they're just a bigger person, in that kid's situation, you might want to keep the same KVP but increase your MAS. If you've got a patient who's a normal size but has just got a high muscle content, then probably increasing the KVP to penetrate through that muscular tissue is a good idea. But of course, as they get bigger and bigger, in that situation, you really need to crank up the KVP. A fat patient of a normal size isn't going to need much more KVP, and indeed the MAS should be approximately the same. But as those patients get bigger and bigger, you're going to need to keep increasing the MAS until it reaches that saturation point where you're just not getting a good image because of the huge amount of soft tissue, in which case you might need to increase your KVP as well as your MAS. So on our fifth concept, if we increase the KVP, the image is going to get greyer. We know that as we have an image which punches through all tissues equally, the image becomes very grey. So if you are still feeling lost after all this, I would like for you to have a look at the Explaining Exposures uh, PowerPoint presentation on the Blackboard site. If you have any questions, please do jump onto Discussion Board or indeed send me an email about this. Thanks, and I'll see you in class.